My next guest, he clearly doesn't get paid by the hour because he went out there and got a first round finish over Mickey Gall in his UFC debut. It's Mike Malott, proper Mike, back here on the program. Mike, how are you? Great, James. Thanks for having me on again. Hey, it is a uh, pleasure is all mine, man. Uh, we'll start first with just with the performance. Could that fight have gone any better? Um, not really, man. That's kind of how I had hoped it would go. You know, always, always want that first round finish ideally. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, Mickey's a tough guy. Nobody's ever done it to him before. No one's ever stopped him the first and nobody's ever knocked him out. Right. So I was pretty, pretty happy with the results at the end of the fight. You know, I mentioned it when we spoke last that, you know, I, I'm fully aware that he's a dangerous guy. I, I respect his skill. He had a lot of things I needed to, to watch out for, but, uh, I felt like I, I fought the fight pretty well. It felt a lot messier, uh, when I was in there and then, uh, reinforced by Joe Rogan saying, oh, man, that was a wild fight. And then in this wild exchange, I caught him. I'm like, damn, was it just like a wild fight? Were you just brawling the whole time? Mm-hmm. So you know, my, my face was gushing. And I was kind of like half, you know, I always kind of want fights to be technical. And in a certain way, like I really value that. But at the same time, I, I said it in the post-fight conference, press conference. I'm like, there's like a dog in me too, man. Like I was excited to be bleeding in the fight. I was excited to have like my nose gushing, you know, I was excited for that type of stuff. So um, like, I, I definitely embraced that that style of fight that night. I was like, I'm not shying away from this at all. Like, excuse me, like you wanna you wanna get in the pocket and exchange hooks? Like, I'm your guy. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, and and you know you you reference that there. Gall had not been uh, you know he's a tough guy to put away. I know you do get finishes, but I don't know if you know this. This was your first TKO win since February of 2017 when you fought at lightweight. So was that the game plan though to try and knock him out, or that's just the way it unfolded? You know. Again, had the fight gone, had the fight gone to the ground, I would have been okay with that. Oops, sorry, the no worries. There. Had I had the fight gone to the ground, I, I would have been okay with that. You know, not with him on top in a good position. He got a nice takedown for a second. He timed it really well. Beautiful double underhooks. Got around the waist, tripped me. Didn't really give me much time to start defending. I had to like go through worse. You know, kind of like escape positions. It wasn't like takedown defense. It was it was like escape. So I had to get back to the feet and didn't really waste any time. And then started pummeling back for, for underhooks and, and got him off me off the cage. Um, but I felt really confident doing that. Like when we tied up, I felt really strong. I'd been dealing with, you know, Aaron Jeffries, big, strong ass all, all camp and having him hold me down. Like that, that jacked dude on top of you is, is a different kind of animal. We've got a bunch of the old Brock wrestlers too. Clay Pye is a, is a Pan American uh, silver medalist who lost, like you silver to, to uh, David Taylor. So it's like to the world champion, like you're an elite level wrestler. So having guys like that on top of me is, you know, throughout camp and then before camp training at alpha male for the last, like, you know, seven years with world-class wrestlers, you know, I was, I was used to that pressure on top. So getting back to my feet, I felt really confident. Um, but yeah, I did see, I did see myself knocking him out more than submitting him in this fight. Not that I felt I couldn't, I just felt like it was the path of least resistance. He's definitely better on the ground than he is on the feet, but he is willing to engage on the feet more so than like press the action to the ground constantly. Like, you know, you see some grapplers who recognize that there's a, a bit of a skill gap between their striking and grappling and they press the action like crazy to get to, to the mat. A great example would be like a Habib. Or he was the best in the world at doing that, right? Um, Mickey's not scared to fight, dude. Mickey, Mickey will strike. Mickey will bang. He can take a hard shot as he showed on Saturday. Like, dude, I hit him with a bunch of hard shots, and he recovered quickly. Even when I dropped him, like it was a face plant knockout. And then ten seconds later, he's on his feet, bouncing around. Like, no, man, I'm fine. I'm fine. Like, damn, dude, this kid can take a fucking punch. Like, he's got a beard on him, right? So, um. You know, no one had knocked him out yet, but I, I really did see myself being the first guy to knock him out. Um, and then obviously, uh, you know, it was, it was a quick fight, so not too much to take away from it. But uh, was there anything about him that, that that surprised you that maybe you weren't expecting? Yeah, I mean, he landed some more shots on me than I thought. He busted my nose open. I thought it was broken in the fight. Luckily, it, it doesn't appear to be right now. So nice. nose, nose is still attack, in, intact. does not appear to be broken. But uh, yeah, he landed a nice shot. I watched it after in the replay. It's like an awkward uppercut with like his wrist that he hit me with. And I, I just started leaking after that. I think that started it. And then he landed like a shot on the ground as I was standing up. And I think that's where it like really started gushing. Um, you know, he landed some shots, but he was also like extremely aggressive, which when being extremely aggressive leaves you yourself open for shots. And I think that's why I was able to land a lot of counter shots in this fight is, you know, 
his aggression lended its style well to my counter punching, which is something I, I, I feel confident doing. So it like, I, I wasn't the one pressing forward like crazy. I'm like, look, he's, he's the one who's willing to close the distance. That's fine with me. Let him walk forward. Like I don't need to be the one to press forward to win this fight. I just need to catch him on the way in while he's, while he's coming forward. Great post-fight speech. And of course, uh, bringing awareness to, to the GoFundMe for uh, Team Alpha Male coach Joey Rodriguez's daughter who has stage three uh, lymphoma. I know you probably expected a big response, especially with the way that win went, but was it a bit overwhelming? Just, you know, the amount of people I saw on social media and then, you know, I had saw the person who gave you the wad of cash. Like, how how was that after the fight? Because like you got this big win, but obviously you brought awareness to this really uh, great cause and that can hopefully help her out. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I, uh, I had planned on doing it before the fight. I hadn't really told anyone about it yet, but uh, I think I told my girlfriend and then I think I told my dad, but I hadn't told anyone that I was planning on shutting him out in the cage. And then I didn't tell anyone that I was planning on giving uh, my show money for the, for the, the uh, GoFundMe. Um, I just figured like, it's one thing to shout out like, Hey, my coach is going through this, like give some money if you can. Like I thought that might've gotten some donations, but I think like leading by example, just being like, Hey, like I'm going to give half my purse. Like let's all get in on this. And just like as a community jump in on, and, and help this family. I felt like that would, that was the way we were going to get the most um, response from, from fans and viewers. But in my mind, I was like, okay, I'll donate 10,000 and best case scenario the fans match it. Like, I, I think that would be amazing if the fans matched another 10,000, like uh, Josh Emmett, UFC featherweight was the one that set up the GoFundMe for, uh, Oh, cool. Joey. I didn't know that. Yeah. So he set that up and he set the goal at like $50,000 and they exceeded that right before my fight a couple of weeks before my fight, but it had kind of plateaued. So I don't think there had been a donation in like a week and a half or something like that. And I was like, well, let's just get like one more, let's just get one more big burst and hope we can get, hopefully we can get these guys some more cash. Cause like, you never know how much this stuff costs. And like, yeah, as tragic as it already is, like you're already going through so much with like your, your kid having to deal with this stuff. Like Angie's already going through so much and Joey's going through so much that the, the family of like, this is a, this is a, this is a, a big fight that we've got ahead of us. And now on top of that, you've got like the financial burden of like, is this going to financially cripple us for the rest of our lives? Like I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't ever any question of like, can we afford the best care? It's like, now it's not a question at all. Like I think f for the whole fight until she's a hundred percent again, like they can afford the best medicine, the best doctors, whether it's like they need to travel for, for healthcare, whether like he needs to take, a week off work to take her places, whatever. It's like, okay, you guys just have that covered now. So we don't need to like, now you can just focus on spending time with her and making sure she's like comfortable and, and doing well. So that was like the goal. But really I thought I was, my goal was like 20 grand. It was like, I don't need 10 and like best case scenario, some fans see it and, and kick in another 10 grand. And I was even like, okay, maybe it'll be five, but like 10 would be awesome, man. Like I was like fingers crossed for 10 and I think like by the time I was done my interviews in the back, it was already at like, I saw a tweet that said 13 K in 13 minutes. It was like immediately, wow. it immediately exceeded what I thought. And uh, so by the time, like we had some spare tickets. So um, I had a bunch of people come um, to watch me. And then I had a couple coaches that were coming that couldn't corner me. So I had like the spare tickets for them. But last minute, one guy had to cancel. And then last minute, the other one had like, he went with uh, one of his other fighters, Jesse Jess. So I was like, oh, I just have like the, the some spare tickets. Like my coaches and I can all go back in. So I went back into the arena afterwards and and took some pictures with fans and stuff and saw my family. And uh, I think it was my cousin was like, do you know how much money they've made already? She's like, they're like up like 25 or 30 grand already. I was like, holy crap, are we serious? So I like looked it up that night and it was it was up like 30 grand, 35 grand by the end of the night. And now it's it's up even more. Um a ton of fan donations. Jake Paul, his his foundation. Can I ask you about that? I wanted to quickly mention this. Yeah. My uh, my good buddy Adam Martin had a had a good tweet uh, after the fight regarding you and and your in your um, exactly. obviously get, getting the awareness out. And Jake Paul uh, quote tweeted that. So I was curious. Did did I know Jake had, had donated? But did he speak to you directly at all? Did you ever get in touch with him? We just kind of commented like I tagged him in and I was like, thanks a lot, man. He's like, yeah, you know, basically no problem. Awesome. Like 
happy to help type thing. So, uh, and then the next day I woke up and, and just, you know, was going through the donations and it'll show like on GoFundMe, like the new top donation. And, and it was 10,000 from uh, boxing bullies. So I just sent them a message. and was like, thanks, man. You guys are good people. Really appreciate it. Like, it's cool, man. Like, you know, they, you know, in certain ways, he's like the, you know, the, the bad boy of boxing right now, but like, dude, that's, you just helped out a family like crazy. Like I'm, I'm a Jake Paul fan big time. Yeah. And, and this isn't the first time he's done stuff like this. I know Sarah Alpar, remember she was having some camp issues he donated to her. So, I mean, say we want about Jake Paul, but he is kind of being like a modern day Robin Hood, at least with uh, his own money and, and also getting awareness out, which is, uh, which is really great. By the way, I checked last night. I think it was at a hundred K. I know it's probably even more than that now, but do you have any idea as of right now, what, what's it at? Cause it, it, it seems like it's just going up and up even more. I think it's at like 110 right now and we're nice. still um, and we're still in talks with the UFC just like sorting out where like how the money's going to get there like if, if yeah. Dane is going to just straight wire it either through the foundation or to to Joey himself or if like it's going to be sent to me and I'll I'll put it in or if somebody like we're just like talking about how how it's like, the logistics of it all right now but uh so I'm not I'm not sure based on the language Dana used it, it, I'm not sure if it's going to be what exactly the amount is um i've heard some people say one amount of you know and then i said that i was going to donate another amount and he was like you know keep your money i'll 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 cover it completely and then some people are saying like it, it sounded like he might add more to it which is nice um or, or add significantly more so um like that it hasn't even been in yet so i think it's at like hundred and ten thousand dollars, and then we still have either 10 or twenty thousand added from the ufc from dana white so like th it's just like i mean you don't want to say like you're excited because it's still like it's still like we're basically like prepping for this basically prepping the, the rodriguez family for like this big fight that they've got ahead of them right this big uh you know th this, this battle with with cancer for angie like but it's it's cool to like it's cool to know that like okay th the finances aren't the issue anymore right like it's yeah it's yeah which we're, is awesome just focused on now, you know when are you looking to get back in there as far as your next fight um i've heard rumors that the ufc is talking about coming to canada um in the fall so that would be perfect i, I think I, I would love to be on a card in canada um that'd be a huge dream come true i was rocking the canadian flag in that fight walked out to fat lip by some 41 so just uh, to walk out have everybody chant along rock the canadian flag fight in canada that would be amazing i, I would that would be a, a huge dream come true almost on par with making my ufc debut it's like that's that those are like two of the biggest ones for me it's like make my ufc debut and then fight in the ufc in canada it's like the next one i'm like let's do this buddy that'd be awesome well, it's not just Canada. I heard specifically Toronto, so that's not a far drive for you. I mean, what would that mean to, to get to fight in Ontario and Toronto for your second UFC fight? Okay, I didn't want to say it because I don't know what's what's out there or not, but that's the rumor I heard too is that it's Toronto. So that's why I'm like, dude, get me on the Toronto card. Like, you know how, yeah. how like, once a year, my dad used to get tickets to the Leafs game at the ACC. That was at the time, right? Scotiabank Center now. But dude, getting like, that was like the, the best night of every year was when my dad got tickets to the league. Mike, thanks so much for doing this. I know we had some connection issues, but really appreciate you slugging through it. And again, congratulations on the win. Anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to plug, I'll give you the last word. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, so uh, I want to thank Niagara Top Team, Corel and Helmogen at uh, House of Champions, uh, Andre Grambois or Boris Jiu-Jitsu, Team Alpha Male, CSA, uh, Aegis, Burlington Training Center, um, my mental coach, Danny Patterson, who flew out to watch me fight and help me through the week. Um, my chiropractor, Dr. Ed Gray at uh, Endorphins. Um, thanks to my friends and family that came out to the fight. My girlfriend came out, my, my immediate family, some aunts and uncles, my high school buddies. So that, uh, that really, you know, made my weekend. And then, of course, um, thanks to everybody who's donated to uh, the, Rodriguez, the Rodriguez family, excuse me. Um, man, really appreciate it.